Bom nos, no fellow Portuguese. <laughs> but Douglas will translate some of what I say. And if it's strange that I showed up with a Corinthian shirt, I see a New York Yankees over here and a New York Mets back there. <laughs> so they're making me welcome in Brazil. <laughs> So first, a little bit about my background. I taught in classes in what we call middle school and high school. That's grades uh, 7 through 12, ages 13 through 18, for 46 years. I am very old. And my main area is what we call earth science. So that's geology, weather and climate, astronomy, um, and environmental science. Um, now I'm trying to figure out what I wrote since it's in Portuguese. <laughs> okay. Um, I've also taught at universities and museums. Have any of you ever been to the American Museum of Natural History in New York City? Okay. Um, that's one of the places that I'm teaching now and I'm teaching teachers at this point. So before I continue I want to thank all of you for coming tonight to hear what I have to say. Uh, I have four college degrees. I have one degree uh, at my first level in geology and then I earned a degree in education in science and then I earned my doctorate in education of science and then later I earned another degree in teaching, methods of teaching. Um, so that is what I look like in my academic regalia with one of my students. I've been the president of several science organizations in the United States. Uh, some at the level of our state, New York State, others on a national level. Uh, so I have been doing lots of programs to help teachers become better teachers. And in this slide down here, we're at Lamont Dougherty, Columbia University's campus, and I'm showing them some of the deep sea materials that have been collected from which we have learned a lot about science. Columbia University is located in New York City. It was started in 1754. We have both undergraduate and graduate programs in science, medicine, business, and many other areas. And many of our students have become very important. One of our students is about to change his job in the United States uh, this Friday. At this time, he's the president of the United States, Barack Obama. This is one of our earlier president, or earlier people. Anybody know who that is? Have you heard of the musical Hamilton? Alexander Hamilton? That's a statue of Alexander Hamilton who went to the same college I did, but 200 years earlier. This is the symbol, a statue of our university, and that's what part of the university looks like. So when you come to New York, tell me and I will give you a tour of the campus. In 1949, Columbia started a new campus and it was given to Columbia University by the family of a man named Thomas Lamont. So it became the Lamont Geological Observatory. Later, a foundation gave lots of money to Columbia and it became the Lamont Dougherty Earth Observatory. We have about 200 research scientists. We have about uh, 300 students 
we have other people on the campus every day studying all around the world. And it's part of what we call the Columbia Earth Institute. We have many famous scientists who have made discoveries about our planet, which we teach in geology and other courses. And we provide graduate programs at the doctorate and master's level. This is my office, but when I left on, what day did I leave? I can't remember what day. Um, when I left Saturday, it didn't look quite like that. Snow. So, geography. This is New York State. This is New York City. The main campus of Columbia is in New York City. The Lamont campus is about 20 kilometers north. The Hudson River separates New Jersey and New York. So to go to the Lamont campus, people have to cross the Hudson River on the bridge. This is New Jersey. This is where I live. I suppose we also at this point need to talk about my habit. I am on the Hudson River a lot. I kayak. And I'm very angry that they did not call me out of my classroom to get into my kayak and save the people on the airplane. Um, so I am very privileged that this is my 14th visit to Brazil since 2007. Obviously, I like Brazil very much. And anybody know where this is? Ibera Puera, Sao Paulo. <laughs> Natal. <laughs> okay. And this is what I spend much of my time doing when I'm in Brazil. Because I don't drink coffee in the United States. You have spoiled me. The reason I started to come to Brazil is because of two friends who were at Columbia University 17 years ago. Christiana and Frederico. Uh, they helped me start the Earth to Class program, and we have continued to be good friends now for 17 years, and we have had wonderful vacations. As you see, we've done canyoning, we've done whitewater rafting, they've taken me to a science museum, and this is showing me Sao Paulo. I've also helped two professors, one from Unicamp, one from uh, Rio Grande do, uh, uh, Porto Alegre, Rio Grande do Sul, um, organize a teacher program at a conference in Foz do Iguaçu in 2010. And these are some pictures from that time to give uh, teachers in Brazil a chance to learn about rocks and weather. So on the website that we will tell you about, and some of you may want to go to it, I have a section called Earth to Class em Brasil. And this is some of the presentations, most in Portuguese. Uh, these are available to you if you'd like to learn some of what we did. So this is the home page. And we have one section with some of the things that I want to share about Brazilian geology, Brazilian meteorology, uh, and many other things about Brazil with the American teachers. So let me now talk about the workshops that I do. We have these once a month 
on a Saturday morning when teachers are not teaching and they allow research scientists to connect with classroom teachers and with students. Sometimes I have 14 and 15 year old students who are interested and want to come and hear what's happening. Um, the presentations are in a uh, uh, in a simpler version we put the presentations onto the website so people who cannot come can still uh, see what we are doing. The website also has many other resources for teachers and students. So I get 50,000 hits a month or more and there's over 2,500 different users. So this is a very well-known website among teachers and students in the United States. So each workshop begins at 8.30 with coffee and refreshments, but we call it caffeine and carbs. And then I give an introduction so that no matter what people might know already, everybody will know some of the important things that the scientists will talk about. Then the scientist talks after we have a break for more coffee and refreshments and to use the restrooms. Um, we have lunch with the scientists so that the teachers can talk about other things. Teachers can talk with each other and this is very important because many teachers are the only teacher in their school and they now know that there are other people that can come and help them. And then we finish many of these by talking about how to use lessons that the teachers can bring back to their students. So here are some pictures. Uh, this is one time where the presenter who worked with the scientist that was at Lamont was about 2,000 kilometers away in the state of Maine. But we used Skype so that she could talk to the people here. And this is a way in which we're able to go beyond what's happening in the walls only in New York City. So some of the topics that we are interested in learning about include world climate, global climate, and what the climate was like in the past, which can help us understand what the climate will be like in the future. We have natural disasters. Uh, we have things in the United States that you don't have in Brazil, like hurricanes. Uh, we talk about earthquakes, and we talk about marine geology, and many other topics. Um, so I have worked with about 80 scientists who have done a wide range, and some of them are some of the most important scientists in their field in the world. So we are very privileged to have these people come and talk to the teachers and students. We do also programs about marine biology and ecology, about the studies of the North Pole and South Pole, uh, atmospheric chemistry. We have a lot of problems with ozone, and we have scientists who are studying that, dust in the atmosphere. And then we also talk about the local geologic history. So on the way here, I was having a lovely time looking at all of the rocks that you put out just for me so that when I visited, I would be able to see new geology. We also go to the laboratories and see some of the research that's being done. So this is a research professor who studies plankton, very tiny floating things. He came from Goa in India, so he speaks Portuguese. <laughs> and we've um, 
had some of the teachers that I work with do presentations. And we also have, at times, been able to uh, have special events where people can do things. So here, they're putting together a telescope. And I have one of the telescopes, and I am presenting it to you. <laughs> we also have programs in which we have high school students come to Lamont, and then we take these students down to the Hudson River in Piermont, near Lamont, and the students actually get into the river. Many of them come from New York City. They've always seen the Hudson River. They've never touched the Hudson River. So we put them into waders, and then they can find things like this turtle. And we put them into canoes, and they are in the Hudson. They have never done this before, and they find out that it's good to be outside and learn not just in laboratories, but in the field. We're trying to turn them into geologists. So if you come to New York City, let me know, and I will take you kayaking. So um, why do we need to have classes like this for the teachers? Uh, in New York State, many thousands of students every year are studying about geology, the weather and climate, about astronomy and space, about the history of the Earth, the fossils, the important events, about natural disasters, especially severe storms. Um, we had a storm, we had two storms that hit New York City in 2011-2012, and much of the city was without power for four days. So we need to know what we can do to try to prepare for how to respond when we have these natural disasters. In classes in North America, in the United States, um, the students in high school may take five or six different classes each day. The classes last for about 50 minutes. So they may be studying science, and then they will study uh, history, and then they may study art, and then they may study something else. And they have many places the same classes every day, so they have to think, okay, right now I have to think like a scientist, now I have to think like an artist. So it's very difficult for many of the students. Um, they Teachers very often do not know much and have to use textbooks. So our program helps them learn more than is what is in the textbook. And in New York State, many of these students will finish the year by taking a state-created examination called Regents Earth Science. Regents is the name for the governors of the school system in New York State. So. 160,000 students every year will take the same examination. And uh, they have some questions which are multiple choice, A, B, C, D, and other questions where they have to write short answers or make a drawing. Uh, they also have a 16-page reference table that they have learned to use. And we have this for students who um, are finishing up the test as part of what they need to do to graduate. So this is part of one of the exams. I know you all know the answers to these questions. But this one talks about the interior of the Earth. And this one says, what instrument is used to know that the Earth rotates, spins on its axis? So the students, when they're taking the tests, go from one part of studying science to another part of studying science. This is one of the questions where they have to write an answer or come up with more information. 
This is about the seasons. And in the United States, there is no national curriculum. So each state can set what it wants for its students to do. Um, and we have these subjects, but usually one year of biology, then one year of chemistry, then one year of physics, and not making the students understand that everything should go together. One of the other problems we have is that since each state sets its own rules, sometimes the politicians say you cannot teach certain things. So we have a controversy topic of climate change. And there are some states where there's lots of coal and they don't want their students to know that there's any problems with using coal. So one of the things that's happening in the United States now is that we are trying to set up what we call next generation science standards so that students and teachers in many different states will be studying some of the same ideas, sometimes these controversial ideas, and they will do it so that they can bring many different ways of learning together. But we have 50 states in the United States, and right now only 14 have agreed to teach with this. What we're also trying to do now is bring in more engineering and technology for the students to learn. And I have visited some schools in Sao Paulo and see that this is what is happening in many Brazilian schools. We also have certain broad ideas that we want students to learn about how science operates. So we want them to learn about cause and effect and systems and making models, uh, how structure and function work. So we're now getting away from facts to how do we learn about the world. <laughs> this is all of the topics in earth science. We'll skip this. You don't have to do the next generation science standards. I do. And so Earth to Class is a way of connecting the teachers with the scientists to help them become better teachers to meet these standards. Um, we're giving them examples of real science not just what's in a textbook. We are connecting students and professors with scientists. Many of them have never met a scientist and so they don't really know what a scientist does. They're very surprised in many cases to find out that the scientist is also a mother and they begin to realize that science is not just a textbook. So uh, what we're able to do also is give the scientists a good way to share what they have learned through their research with a much wider audience. And this is something which is very important in the United States. Many times people will put in a proposal to get money for their research. Maybe one research program out of 20 will get the money. 19 will not be able to do their research. And sometimes the reason that the one gets selected is because they have Earth to class. I'll skip this. Okay. Um, so um, we are trying with Earth to class to get the teachers to see real science. We're getting the professors to meet with the teachers and share their information. And um, I'm trying to figure out what I wrote here. Okay. Who pays? What? Who pays? Who pays, yes. Okay. Oh. Lemon. Okay. Uh, Lamont gives us the auditorium and the space. Um, the scientists often volunteer if it's not part of their research project. We uh, pay about 150 
to $160 for lunch and refreshments. And the teachers pay $15 uh, for each session, or the students pay half of that. And the teachers receive a piece of paper, a certificate, which says they were there and they can use this um, to show their schools that they are still learning also. Here in Brazil, I'm hoping that after you've heard me, you will be able to start participating in programs that you create, which will bring teachers from your area uh, to learn from your research scientists. Um, there are a lot of other things that can be done if you set up a website to share information. People who cannot come will be able to hear it. Um, but it's very important that the teachers learn what's happening in science ideas today so that they can become better teachers for the students. And it's not expensive to run these courses. Um, it's possible to get um, improvements from approvals from the uh, school districts so that they accept it. Um, your area around here of Diamantina has fabulous geology. And so this is something that you could take advantage of, uh, offering programs that would bring students and teachers here uh, or taking them outside and uh, I would be very happy to work with some of the professors about setting up programs with questions. And as I said, if you ever come to New York, let me know. I'll take you around New York. Obrigado. <laughs>